When I was still young, uh, these animals could come at night. The roar, the roar of the lion can break even the calabash. <laughs> In other words, they had to push into the park to get enough grazing. Now it's made worse by climate change because we have a lot of rainfall, so the water level was rising and flooding the opposite side where the salt pans used to be. So what oh. they did is they took over part of the grazing area, dug lagoons to create a new shallow uh, salt pan so that they could harvest the salt. So that is another development that is detrimental for the pastoralists. In other words, eventually they will have no grazing area and they will have to move deeper into the park to find enough forage for their cattle and goats. It's a Because that whole crater area used to be grass. And even since I have started coming, they've turned it into agriculture. Just yeah, more and more and more and more and more. Beyond that bridge, you will see in terms of cultivation. And so now they're even doing this little last one night.
towards one o'clock. In the open. Yeah, yeah. So the animal is there, the, the big male. Hey, it's more this way. But that is Rudy, yeah? All of them. The same spot? In here. Martin, uh, the head teacher, Mhocha Primary School, mm -hmm. and uh, a member of the Leopard Village here. This is Kasese District, a magnificent place of uh, Uganda. Uh, this place here, really, we are batting with the Queen Elizabeth National Park, and we are indigenous people here. But most of the cases, animals ask us who are indigenous, us, the animals, or the, you, the people. And most of the cases, they are the animals. Because most of the tribes move from one place to another, but the animals do not move. They are the most indigenous here. And we really, we have lived with them. We have lived with lions. We have lived with leopards uh, together. So we have endeavored our toils to make sure we live together with these animals, though we, we, we kill them and they kill our animals. But nowadays, really, as you have come here to educate us about how we can coexist with these animals, we are no longer hunting them. And that's why we are setting this camp here, really, to be an educative camp uh, a social camp uh, whereby even other people from outside can come and lodge here. So the beginning is good. The beginning is good. Even a, a, a distance of a thousand kilometers starts with a single step.
very well. And they last long. Okay, so all night. At least for yeah. eight hours. Oh, good. This is almost yeah. The most important thing is to stay with our animals because we stay, we are with them, we cannot chase them, we cannot kill them and really they are, they, they are bringing us, most of the cases, friends. We don't call them tourists but we call them friends. What's your last name? Your full name? My Chris Kasatagara. Chris Kasatagara. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And he's going to tell us the story of why this is called Leopard Village and what his role was in that story. There was a trap in my village, and uh, ours, we are traditionally cattle keepers. We are pastoralists. Mm -hmm. Now it happened in the morning. I was grazing my cows. The cows were. Actually, we are threatened, and I came to know when I went to see what was happening. I saw a leopard in the trap. In the, uh, there was a bush, and I realized it was a leopard in the trap. I diverted the cows from that place, and then I came also to realize there were some hunters around who had to get a spear the leopard. And good enough, I'm a leader in that area, so I told them don't harm the leopard. Let me call somebody to rescue. In the following morning they came. When they came, we got it had moved from that place. It, it was actually very weak now, it has, it has becoming weak. Now again I called people back where Dr. Sifford was, and we came with the role, and it, good enough, it was tapped. We reached there, put it in a vehicle. Ah, and then why this place was called Leopard Village? It was because of the genesis of that leopard. Uh, Dr. Shifat connected me with several tourists. Whenever they could come, I could tell them this is the man who restored the leopard. This is how I met Monica mm -hmm. and very many of you now. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the story how the, this place came to be known as the Leopard Village. Don't run.